This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, wholly different. Why I chose biblical values over Islamic values. That is the new book written by author Nani Darwish, who joins us this evening. Nani, what an honor and a pleasure to have you back on the Glazov Gang. Always a pleasure to be with you, Jamie. Thank you. Nani, fascinating new book. Uh, just so profound. Thank you for writing it. And I discussed this book with you for, you know, quite a while, you know, when we were uh, talking while you were writing it. Nani, let's start with this. Why did you choose to write this book? Well, I just wanted to tell America that the problem is a lot more than just ISIS. Uh, a lot of people in America think that if only terrorism goes away and the true good Islam comes out, the peaceful Islam will come out, and then we can all live happily ever after. But that is not true because Islamic values and biblical values are total are in total opposition. They are the opposite to one another in every way. When I started the book, I started with only 14 or 15 differences, main differences. And then when I ended, uh, by now I have 60. Nani, before you go further, Nani, before you go further, at this crucial point in your answer, Muslims often say, but Islam is also an Abrahamic religion. We believe in the same God. And yet, the value is completely different. So is it an Abrahamic religion? I don't believe so. I think Muhammad, 600 years after Christ, Islam came as a movement by Muhammad uh, as a rebellion against the Bible, the Ten Commandments, and the, any kind of penetration of biblical values into Arabia. It's so clear, you don't have to be a psychologist, and I'm not a psychologist. If you read the Quran, the majority of the Quran is not a confirmation of the Bible, but a rejection of the Bible. It's also a, a rejection of the children of Abraham. So how can Islam be uh, a biblical, uh, 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 I, I'm sorry, how can it be an Abrahamic religion when it's actually advocating killing the children of Abraham, the Jews and Christians? Nani, as Christians, you and I have also discussed this, uh, you know, throughout the years. When we look closer at Islam, there seems to be the polar opposite of Jesus, correct? Exactly. Just even relating to Allah and relating to Jesus is just the total opposite. Jesus came down to, to save us. In Islam, we have to save Muhammad and Allah's reputation by killing anyone who offends Muhammad. The worst crime under Islamic law is not murder. It is offending Muhammad. It's called blasphemy. And you have to kill that person even if that person repents. So uh, it, as a Muslim, when I used to be a Muslim, I felt it's my duty to die for Allah. In the Bible, Jesus came to die for us, mm -hmm. to save us. Yeah. What, a, what a different concept of God. Thank you, Nani. Uh, and perhaps it's not completely professional for a talk show host to say this, but amen to what you just said. Nani, did, did Nani Darwish come out a different person a little bit after writing this book than before? Absolutely, Jamie. My uh, belief in the in the Bible has multiplied. I am more at peace. I now know my cause in life. I look at people as human beings more. I forgive more. I forgive myself more. Thank, thank you, Nani. Um, let me ask you this: the Ten Commandments. Does Islam follow the Ten Commandments or does it violate the Ten Commandments? 
That's a good question because I have a whole chapter in the book about how Islam violated all the Ten Commandments. How can Islam claim to be following the Ten Commandments when it advocates killing the enemies of Allah? And who are the enemies of Allah? They are all non-Muslims, the majority of the world. So murder is allowed. Lying is allowed. It's not just allowed, but actually it is uh, recommended. It's an obligation to lie and slander if it's for the benefit of Islam. Theft. Uh, Muslims are, are allowed to take the property of non-Muslims, the kafir. So even work ethic. I discovered that work ethic is a biblical ethic. Because under Islam, when they preach having, uh, uh, having wealth, creation, wealth creation is through jihad. And I uh, quoted many sheikhs in, in the Muslim world who say if the reason we are poor in the Muslim world is because we abandoned jihad, which brought us the wealth of the kafir. Nani, in terms of feminism, um, when, when, when a woman wants to find the mandate for feminism and she looks in the New Testament or in, in general at the Bible or when she looks at the Quran, what are the two different experiences in trying to find a justification for feminism? That is an excellent question and again I have a whole chapter on and that's why I'm asking you these questions. Excellent questions come from excellent chapters in an excellent book. I have a chapter on secular feminism, mm -hmm. Islamic feminism, and biblical feminism. And I discovered really that it is biblical feminism that's true feminism. Islamic feminism, if you see powerful women in the Middle East, and even in America, these are the women who wear the hijab with pride. They are supporting of Sharia. And I have written about almost supporting their own bondage, and they wear it as a badge of honor. These are the women who stand in front of the cameras in, in the Middle East and say, I'm going to give my sons to jihad, my children, I'm going to give my husband to jihad. And they are so proud, and they, they put these women in, uh, on a pedestal in, in Islamic media. These are the women who get positions in parliaments in the Middle East. These are the same women who, if they get a PhD, Saudi Arabia sends them here to America to teach in Islamic Studies Department, Middle East Studies Department, and they advocate that I'm so happy to be a Muslim. I, I am liberated by wearing my hijab. Thank you, Nani. Nani, I, I'm sorry, we're, 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 go ahead, we're running out of time, but go ahead, finish up. Uh, and then, unfortunately, they align themselves with secular feminists on campuses who, uh, and both of them, and these, this is from your book, they're both united in hate. You know, I love it when I interview someone about their book, but we always end up talking about my book. That's the way a Glasov gang interview should go. So they're both united in hate, as you've ex brilliantly explained in your book, united in the hatred of the Bible and biblical values. Yeah, you didn't mean me and you. You mean what, what the left in Islam does, right? Yeah. Exactly. And what happens is the, they, are, they hate the Bible so much. Yeah. But they don't look at the Bible as the best, re the, the feminist revolution of its time. 2,000 years ago, women were property. Right. Uh, the Middle East uh, advocated uh, polygamy uh, and, and harem. The richer the man was, the more the harem he owned. Thank you, Nani. We're, 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 we're out of time. Before we go briefly, please, we've got to leave a lot of this as a mystery so that people go get your book. Nani, briefly... Why should people go get your book and read it? Because they're going to understand the threat from Islam that is not just terrorism. Terrorism is the outer, outer skin of Islam, but inside is a, is a great, great threat to our civilization. Also, 
they will appreciate more and they will notice biblical values in America in little things all around them. And it's going to be a blessing. Thank you so much, Nani, and thank you for all that you do and for writing Wholly Different. And I wish you the best of success. Thank you, Nani. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you, and our audience, make sure to go get Nani Darwish's book right now when you finish watching this show, Wholly Different, and uh, you can go on Amazon.com and order it there. And please remember, we're a fan-generated program. We're only here because of you, so go to jamieglazoff.com to help us stay here and make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel of the Glazoff Gang. Good night.